You guys, I made a free pattern. If you're interested to find out what pattern I made and where you can pick up your copy, then please keep watching this video. Hey Stitchers, your girl Chris here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel on social where it's totally cool to be obsessed with sewing. Now, if this is the first time that you are coming across one of my videos, then I'm really hoping that you will enjoy this video and consider sticking around. If you have been here before, that makes you an OG and I'm so thankful that you keep coming back to watch my videos. Now, today's video, I'm going to be talking about the free mood pattern, which is the Clementine dress. Now, July, the Sew Your View team over on Instagram is featuring the Clementine dress by Mood Fabrics. It just so happens that for this month, my girl Diana of 26 by Diana is the host for Sew Your View. And so you know that I had to go ahead and give her some support by sewing up the featured pattern. I do have some thoughts, but before I share them with you, let me hit pause so I can share with you some of the behind the scenes of this sew. So I've printed off the Clementine Dress by Mood Patterns. Now this is a huge pattern piece, like seriously, really, really large. And it does not have nested sizing, which means when you print it, you get all of the sizes from a size 00, zero all the way up to a size 32. So I'm tracing off the size 14 and I'm just using a highlighter just to go over the lines that I need just to make it easier when I need to go ahead and cut out my size. Now this is a great tool to use. It makes identifying your cutting lines much easier even though the lines are different in terms of the lengths and spacing of the um, miniature lines, I just find it a little bit more complicated to try and cut it out as is and I like to use a highlighter to make this step a lot easier. All right, so usually patterns are too long for me at the waistline. I was going through the hashtag on Instagram and I noticed that for a couple of people, there was some bagging at the um, joinder of the bodice to the skirt. And so I've gone ahead and taken the plunge and decided to shorten my um, bodice by half an inch. Now, because of how this pattern is drafted, I was a little bit unsure whether I needed to take the half inch through this portion right here or whether it needed to come through here. I know that this is the waistline section, but I have just decided to go ahead and put it through here Fingers crossed that so this is in the right location. Now, I'm not going to make up a twirl of this pattern just because, you guys, look at how big this pattern piece is. And this has been cut down to a size 14. The um, size 32 then, as you can imagine, is humongous. And so I'm not going to do a twirl of this pattern. I'm just going to bite the bullet and pray for the best. But I'm going to shorten it a half inch just here where I have indicated. So I've actually got three pieces of double gauze in my stash that I picked up on my um, fabric haul in Barbados and I'm thinking I want to use these three fabrics to make the clementine dress. Now I feel like my first layer which is going to be the bodice should be in this lighter color. Then I'm going to have to do tier one of my skirt in this color and then tier two of my skirt in this color but I'm not sure whether I actually have enough fabric in order to make this work. But I think I'm going to try and place my pattern pieces and see, fingers crossed, if by any stroke of luck, I can get um, my Clementine dress cut out of these gorgeous double gauze fabrics. Now, I did go ahead and iron my fabrics first. I know they're double gauze, but I did do a light press just to get out any creases and folds and whatnot in my fabric because I traveled with them and they were really creased. Um, I'm not worried about it. This is a sort of loose fitting dress that has lots of elastic which makes the dress very adjustable and it means that it's not close fitting on me. And when I wash this dress, this double gauze is going to um, crinkle back to its natural state. So I'm not worried at all. If you are going to use double gauze and you've never used it before, I would recommend using it with a project that is quite loose fitting and airy, just so you have enough room for um, adjusting of your fit once you wash your garment. So I'm going to go ahead now and try and cut this out. All right, so I want to go ahead and make a tiered skirt out of this skirt pattern. I've gone ahead and measured down 16 and a half inches from my waistline and have just gone ahead and drawn a line in which is perpendicular to my fold line because I want to separate my skirt into two tiers. Now, the bottom tier looks larger than the top tier, but I'm actually thinking that I want my skirt to be a lot shorter than um, this pattern is. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away the upper tier of my skirt, go and add seam allowance to where I've cut, and then I'm going to cut out my lower tier. Or actually, I think I'm going to start constructing my dress with the bodice and the skirt, the first tier, so that I can check the length on me. And then I can make a final decision about how long I want my second tier to be. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I've gone ahead and prepped my bodice piece and my skirt piece, and now I need to attach them together. You guys, this project requires so much ironing. You have to press the hems on the bodice, both at the waistline and at the shoulder line and at the sleeve line, and then you also have to do the same thing on the skirt. Ooh, child, it is exhausting. If you do not like ironing, I absolutely would not recommend this project. Anywho, since I've gotten that out of the way, I'm now going to go ahead and attach my bodice to my skirt. Now, I'm pretty sure the instructions on the website are incorrect. It tells you to attach them wrong side together, but I am actually going to go ahead and attach these right side together, take it to my machine and stitch it using one and a quarter inch um, seam allowance as per the instructions. So I've pressed under all of my casings and I've gone ahead and attached my bodice to my skirt, stopping at the um, center front notch. And I've just pressed it into place and pinned my place, my casings into place, even though I'm not yet ready to stitch them. So the next step is to go ahead and join my um, front and back um, dress at the side seams, stitching using, I think, a half of an inch seam allowance. Then I'm going to go ahead and finish my raw edges with my serger. So I have gone ahead and I've sewn my, I think this is the shoulder, is this the shoulder? I think this might be the shoulder. And I've also sewn the bodice and I sewed the side seam of one side of my skirt. Now I think the instructions tell you to sew both side seams, serge and press towards the back. But if I do that, then I won't be able to get my elastic thread through um, my casing at the waistline. So I haven't sewn this bit just yet. I'm going to think about it a bit. It might just be that I am tired, but I'm going to give this now a break and then I'll get back to this hopefully tomorrow. And maybe by that time, this bit will make sense. But so far, so good. But geez, you guys, so much pressing. Guys, forgive me. I went ahead and did quite a bit of this work off camera. And it's just because I was going a little bit rogue. I didn't know what I was doing. And it took me a little while to figure out how I can get this um, resolved. The downside to mood patterns is that the instructions suck. And so the instructions were telling me to finish off my side seam, serge the edges and press it towards one side, all before like putting in my elastic. But I kept thinking if I did it that way, I wouldn't be able to get my elastic to go right around the circumference of my skirt. So what I ended up doing instead is that I left my skirt, sorry, I left my side seams undone just about between here and here. So maybe about, is that like about maybe five, six inches? And then I went ahead and top stitched most of my casing, but leaving about an inch or so undone closer to the side seams. That allowed me to thread my elastic through and get it looped right away around the skirt. And then both ends of my elastic ended up here at the side seam. I then stitched my side seam together and surged it, pressed it to one side and then finished off the top stitching. Now, I think that might be a little bit complicated to understand, but it was the best way I could figure out on the spot to get my elastic in and to get my seams quite tidy. No, it's not correct, or at least I don't think it's correct. That is not what the instructions said to do. But as I said, I departed from the instructions and it has turned out quite neat on the inside and quite neat as well on the outside. So this is the best that I could have done. Now, you might notice that my top stitching thread on this sort of mauvey pink color is a little bit brighter. I did not have anything in my stash remotely close to this um, fabric. And I don't live somewhere where I can easily run out and buy thread. And this is the closest match I could have gotten. I don't think it's too bad because of the material being double gauze. I don't think it's so noticeable, but I figured I'd point it out anyway, just in case the eagle eye amongst you noticed the top stitching. Now, I also went ahead and attached the third tier, which is in this bright pink. So I just cut it out, um, added my seam allowance to it to join it to my second tier, and I serged the edges to finish them. Now, I'm thinking that I maybe would have preferred if my third tier was gathered as well, but I don't think I have enough material to gather it. And so 
I think for this iteration, it's going to have to stay as it is. I do feel like it's a bit long though. I tried it on and it feels a little bit matronly to me. So I'm going to pause the project here so I can do a quick try on so that you guys can see what the current length is. And then I can decide whether I want to go ahead and shorten it. And if so, by how much? Now, I wasn't able to finish the elastic in the sleeve either just because I ran out of elastic. The instructions tell you to use quarter inch elastic, but then the casings are quite big. They're like three quarters of an inch in width. And so I went ahead and used half inch elastic um, in my waistline seams. And I think I'm going to use half inch elastic as well in my sleeve seams as I use half inch elastic in my neckline sleeves. So just pay attention to that. The finished casing is about three quarters of an inch and they're asking you to use half inch elastic. I have no idea why. All right, guys. So you have seen some of the behind the scenes regarding the Clementine dress by Mood Patterns. Surely you can tell that this was a really, really haphazard project. It started off in the right direction. Then I wasn't sure if I was liking how it was working out. It required me to grab my own picker more than one time. But I finally think I've gotten to a point where I am satisfied with my dress. I won't say that I love it because I don't, but I am satisfied with it. And I'm sure that it will get somewhere over the next couple of months. Now, the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the instructions. <sighs> If you have never sewn a pattern before, I would not recommend starting with this pattern. Yes, it's free. And so obviously it gets a thumbs up for that, but the instructions suck. That is just the reality of the thing. The instructions do not give you a lot of guidance. And in my view, some of the instructions seem to be wrong. For example, one of the earlier instructions has you join the body section of this make to your skirt section of this make wrong sides together first and then you somehow i don't know invert it to create the casings i have no idea i completely disregarded that and decided to sew mine right side together and then form my casings which worked out perfectly fine for me and so if you are a beginner perhaps it is that the behind the sew kind of will help you i didn't do a full sew along just because i was trying to figure out things as i went as well but I'm hesitant to say if you need a sew along, I'll show you. But I think Diana is doing a sew along for this pattern. If it is already live, then I'll go ahead and tag her video in the description box down below, or at least tell you where you can find it. If it is not, then fingers crossed, you should have a sew along before the end of this month. Now, aside from the instructions, the notions also seemed wrong to me. Now, this make is asking you to use quarter inch elastic in the casings, but each of the finished casings are three quarters inch in width. So it didn't seem really practical to me to go ahead and use quarter inch elastic. That would mean a really big casing and really thin elastic and the elastic would have a lot of room to sort of move around in the casing, which again did not make sense for me. So I did go ahead and use half inch elastic in my casings, which I find to be a much better call. So just keep that in mind if and when you go to sew up your version of this pattern. Now I did do a hack to my pattern. You guys, I really, really like pattern hacking so much so that I am hosting the Pattern Hackathon over on Instagram for the month of July. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, check out these two videos here and then go ahead and get your entries in before the 31st of July, 2024 at 11.59 American Standard Time. I'm not going to delve into it too much here just because I already have videos explaining all the details about the Pattern Hackathon. But as I was saying, I did go ahead and hack this pattern just because I really like hacking patterns. That's the first thing. And second of all, I wanted to use these three different colors of fabric for my dress. Now I bought these fabrics in Barbados and I bought them with a color blocked dress in mind. When I thought about making the Clementine dress, for some reason, these fabrics just came to my mind. And so I decided to color block this dress. Now in hindsight, I'm thinking that perhaps I should have used this mauve color as the bodice and then use this lighter color in between this mauve color and then the hot pink. Um, I think maybe that combination would have looked even nicer than this current combination. I did start second guessing when I saw it on, but I think it looks okay, but I do think that there's room for improvement. Now for my hack, I went ahead and shortened the skirt and then I attached a third tier. Now, initially my third tier, I simply just created a style line and sewed on the third tier without adding any additional volume. 
And I think I took a picture. If I did, I'll pop it on screen so that you can see where my mind was at. But once I had completed that, I wasn't sure if I loved it for two reasons. It felt a little bit long to me. And in my mind, the length that it was sitting at felt a little bit matronly. And the second thing is, I felt like it needed to have a gathered tear. Now that I've done it, I'm not so sure. Anyways, because I was convinced that a gathered tear would be best, I went ahead and unpicked my third tier, um, but I wasn't sure if I had enough fabric left over to do two of the pieces cut on fold for the front and two of the pieces cut on fold for the back because I wanted my third tier to be even more voluminous than my second tier, and I wanted to be so two times the amount of my first tier. Anywho, when I checked the fabric that I had left over, I was able to squeeze out the third tier, but it did require me to shorten it significantly, which didn't matter so much to me since I felt like the dress was a little bit too long anyways. So what I did was I removed the tier that I originally had, shortened that tier, cut two additional tiers, sewed it all together. And so I had four panels for my third tier and then I gathered it and attached it to my skirt. Now I like how swishy this garment is because of that extra volume. But I don't know, you guys, I'm just sort of second guessing my decisions when it came to this dress. First with the color blocking and then with the gathered tears. So I would really appreciate if you would leave me some comments down below and let me know what you think of my dress. What do you think of it in its current state? Did you prefer it initially without the extra gathers in the third tier? Do you think it would have been better if I had used the colors of my fabric a little bit differently? Leave all that information in the box below. I will tell you, however, that I only had, I think, one yard of this color, one yard of this color, and then I think one and a half yards of this bright pink because when I was shopping for the fabric, it occurred to me that the bright pink would have been the last tier of whatever it is I was choosing to make. So I did go ahead and buy a little bit more of the third tier. But again, I'm not so sure how I feel about my finished dress. Now, in terms of the fit, I did size down one and made up a size 14 of this dress. However, I'm almost thinking that I could have sized down to a size 12, especially at the bodies of this dress, just because... It is huge, like it has so much volume. And of course, I'm using this double gauze fabric, which is extra poofy. And I'm wondering if maybe if I had sized down to a 12, it would have eliminated just a little bit more of this volume, especially around like my bust and upper area, and then just concentrate the volume towards the skirt area. I'm not sure it's already done, so I guess I'll never know. But that is a consideration if you're making this dress, depending on your fabric substrate, you might want to consider sizing down one or two sizes. Now this pattern does come with pockets, but your girl went ahead and omitted the pockets for this make. <sighs> I really have no excuse, you guys. I really have no excuse. I think I probably could have included the pockets just fine in this double gauze. I would have interfaced my side seams, which I usually do anyway when I'm working with pockets, but I just didn't do it. And I'm sort of wishing that I did, but again, it's too late. I mean, I could unpick the side seams, like technically speaking, but there is no way. After I have already used my unpicker that much for this project, there is no way in hell I am unpicking these side seams to add pockets. So I'm going to have to wear this dress without them. Now, if I were to rate my dress, I would give this dress like a five or so out of 10, just because... I'm not really sure about the way I combine the colors. In hindsight, I feel like a different color combination, or at least a different combination of these colors in terms of the tier structures may have been a little bit better. And again, I already spoke to you about the fit of the sleeve area and the poofiness of the bodice. Those are the three things that are um, just a little bit concerning for me and which resulted in me drastically reducing my score to a 5 out of 10. Now let me know in the description box whether you agree with my assessment of this make. Again, it is a free pattern and I feel like with the right fabric substrate, it could be a cute dress, maybe with just a couple tweaks to it. And again, if you have never made a pattern before, stay away from this pattern or perhaps any more patterns just because the instructions suck. Anyways, you guys, that is my review of the Clementine Dress by Moo Patterns. I was really happy that Diana was able to be the host of So Your View this month. I am super, super proud of you, girl. So well done, Diana, on securing a spot as a So Your View 
post. Now that is all I needed to share with you guys today. So again, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to go ahead and give me a thumbs up, drop me some comments down below, answering all of those questions that I asked you earlier. And of course, if you're not yet a subscriber, please, please, please do consider subscribing to my channel. It costs you absolutely nothing extra, but it does guarantee you a spot right here with me in my YouTube sewing family. And I really appreciate your presence here. So that is all I needed to share with you guys today. So until next time, stay calm, stay cool, stay safe, and absolutely keep sewing. Peace.